Uh, hi, my name is John. And I'm Kevin. Uh, one thing we're going to be talking about is the comparison between uh, the 1990 Hamlet and the 1996 uh, Hamlet uh, film. And uh, one of the first things that I really liked about either film was uh, the 1996 version was the casting and the way it went uh, and the direction that they went. So um, a lot of underrated actors for the time being. Uh, we got guys like Kenneth Branagh, Kate Winslet, and Julie Christie. Someone or some of these people aren't really represented as much, but they kind of took this film. It was around four hours. It's a little longer, but they really were able to take this film, take it to a high level and um, being able to act very well. And so I thought they went really well in that direction. Uh, something that I liked about the 1996 film in particular was the cinematography. I thought it was very well recorded. Um, I thought that overall it was just a higher quality than the 1990 film uh, when it came to how the camera looked. And to put that more into perspective, specifically certain scenes like the ghost scene, it really stood out, and uh, the fight scene as well. Uh, those two scenes really... Uh, kind of put it out there in your face where that uh, that 1996 film was just super well put together and super well recorded in comparison. Yeah, and we don't hate the 1990 version. It's a great film. Um, but we just think that the 1996 version really does a lot better things in a runtime of four hours. But um, one of the first things that we're going to talk about first is the casting. And so um, looking here on our notes, uh, we're going to talk about the 1990 version first. And uh, Mel Gibson actually plays Hamlet. And so this is very different uh, from his previous roles. You know, we always know Mel Gibson as a really big uh, action star, but he really takes it to a different notch and tries to do this more dramatic film. And um, really in this movie, uh, he is very, very dramatic. Um, and this is partly due because it is a Shakespeare, split, a Shakespeare play, and he really tries to follow the script. Uh, as much from the script that was written for the uh, for the movie and the one that was written for the play from Shakespeare. And um, he really uh, displays as Hamlet as someone that's very selfish. And uh, whether he's just talking to him uh, to himself or maybe whether he's talking to others, he really only cares about himself. And that's the way that uh, Gibson really portrays Hamlet in this film. Um, in this one, he's sort of as an outsider. And I don't know if that's how the direction that the director wanted to go, but maybe that is what they wanted to do. But he's really kind of dark. He's always kind of dirty. Uh, his hair is always out of place. And um, he's really, like I say, he's considered an outsider. Not People kind of know him, but they don't want to know him at the same time. And then um, next, one of the next uh, casting members that we're going to talk about is Glenn Close. Um, she plays Gertrude, and I think that's a great casting choice because uh, she is a phenomenal actress, and she has played royal royalty in other roles. And so I thought, like I said, great casting choice. Um, just like Mel Gibson, she's very dramatic, especially in her death scene. Um, it's going to be a lot different than the 1996 version, but... Um, she is just really dramatic in the way that she dies, and I think that's a really great uh, way to kind of send off her character. And uh, one of the last uh, characters that's really important in Hamlet uh, is Ophelia, and she's played by Helen Bohem Carter. Um, I think it was a weird direction to go for casting as Ophelia. Um, she's played, um, she's been a uh, Fight Club and many other movies. Kind of not as someone who is as royal as Ophelia, um, but she is really broken through around throughout this movie. And I guess when I when we read Hamlet, um, it's kind of not what we expected like Ophelia to look like. So, in my opinion, I don't think it was the greatest casting choice. Um, but other than that, it really shows how like how broken she is and having that actress play as her. And um, to jump in here, so to have Elena Carter cast as the 1990 Ophelia, as you said, it didn't really quite fit what the movie felt like it should have been. And her casting, and this is in no means a, a diss on her, but the way that she appears in the movie, um, and this may be more of a makeup thing um, as well as the casting combined, but it, it plays, it feels, feels like it hinders the tone. Um, she gives off 
uh, kind of like a an essence of someone who maybe be under the influence of drugs or someone who's been mentally ill for a very long time. And it hinders the film in such a way that her character kind of just becomes this out of place, um, like wiry figure that not really associates well with the rest of the cast. To compare Kate Winslet in 1996, um, she appears much more full in the sense that her skin tone is a little more fair as opposed to being as pale. Um, as Helena Carter in 1990, and she seems more more there mentally um, in the film. She seems much more like a rock of a character and someone that uh, you can actually use to help follow the uh, the script of the movie. Yeah, and so um, I like how you added that on about King Woodslet. Um, she is really known for just being like her beauty, and I think that is why she was definitely a better casting choice. For Ophelia, which I have in my notes, um, she is just a lot more happier in this movie and a lot more joyful. As with Carter, she was just more depressed. Now I get that around the, around the end, uh, with her brother dying, and um, she just gets uh, really upset, and that would that's kind of drives her to uh, die in the play. Um, but there are really like moments that they are very similar to each other. Um, I know there's a scene in the 1996 movie where she's kind of going crazy, just like how Carter did um, in the in the movie, and so I think that's what's really kind of good to look at, and um, they both need to have these similar moments together. And so um, other, you know, when we jump into the 1996 version, uh, Hamlet was played by Kenneth Branagh, and so he is very comparable. Obviously, this movie was made six years later, so it's really nice to like look back on these films and kind of see what they could do better, see what they could, they could take with them to this. But Hamlet is really more in a royal setting. Um, and you can we're going to talk about that more and how what the setting really looks like. But um, he is very comparable to Mel Gibson, very dramatic. But um, in this movie, he isn't really displayed as an outsider. A lot of people know Hamlet uh, very well in this movie. And um, they, they sort of like him at the beginning until everything happens. Uh, through the climax of the movie, you know, um, probably once around, um, Ophelia dies and he starts changing a little bit. But Kenneth Branagh does a really good job playing as Hamlet, though. And then uh, lastly, uh, Gertrude was played by Julie Christie. Uh, she, she really just knocks it out of the park with this, uh, with this role. Um, as I said before, very comparable to Glenn Close's character, although she is not as big as Glenn Close. Um, I feel like she was very quiet in the 1996 film until, or even her death, she was very quiet. It wasn't dramatic like Glenn Close. Um, but other than that, she's still able to uh, do a great acting performance, especially when uh, Polonius was killed. Um, she really gave it her all and really bonded well with uh, Kenneth Brown, and they did a really great scene together. Uh, so jumping into the tone here, uh, something very easy to notice very early on in the films, especially going back to Ophelia, the uh, comparison between Kate Winslet and Helena Carter, was that the 1990 movie seems much more dreary and like much more of a sad film uh, due to the appearance of the characters, uh, especially Ophelia. And as I had said earlier, how Helena Carter gives off a very pale um, skin tone. Uh, she looks very ill, very sick. And that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the movie. Um, and just comparing it to the 1996 version, uh, while the lighting is, is dark in the castle, um, it's not quite as dreary of a movie. Um, it's not really like a, a sad or a, uh, oh, what's a good way to put it? Like, it's just, it's not, it's not a sad movie. Um, and the 1996, there's, doing doing their thing it's not really like they're uh doing anything special or anything over the top they're just um executing the play as it was intended yeah and so going on with that um the 96 version uh the reason why it's four hours long is because it's going more with the play and it's adding more to it 
uh, for example, um, the 1990 version did not have uh, Hamlet's father, uh, his death scene, to whereas uh, this uh, this version actually has it. It goes more in depth to where it makes the audience have a better understanding of the play even more, uh, which is why um, high schools, high schoolers and college students are watching this movie uh, because maybe the play doesn't make sense to them. And so this basically makes it better for them to understand it better. In the 1990 version, the setting was mostly in a castle. Uh, it's called the Dunatar Castle, as well as the Stonehaven and Blackness Castle. And those were used for the film locations. Um, I think I said in my notes that this was like, like you said, a really dark setting. Yeah, and I mean that that dark setting. Uh, it's just like the the brightness of the movie in and of itself is super dark and. Uh, that kind of, in my opinion, it kind of just ruins the whole setting. You can't really see a whole lot. No. Um, like, you know, they, they break off into the other rooms. The lighting's a little bit better, you know, scene to scene. Yeah. But it's really at the beginning of the movie when you're trying to grasp the concept of what Hamlet is, what it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like watching, watching a blind movie. If you can't see anything, you mm-hmm. don't know what's going on. Right. Yeah. So I'd say that's, that's kind of what I would characterize the darkness as. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, that film location was in London. Um, so yeah, going on what you said, it was really kind of dark and it kind of just blends in with the whole uh, tone also. And for the 1996 version, this was actually more updated to a 19th century version, as it said uh, online. And um this was shot at a different location. It's called the Blenheim Palace. Yeah, so that's, um, in, that's in England. Yes. Uh, let's see, that's it's technically non-royal in mm-hmm. so like the actual castle itself in England is non-royal. Yeah. Uh, but for the movie purpose, it was used. Um, it's northwest of London, so. Okay. Uh, more towards Oxford, um, kind of in between that Birmingham and London, kind of right in between. So it's, if you could imagine London on a map, it's in the right. middle and then just slightly south of there. Gotcha. So yeah, even though you said it wasn't used for like non-royal, <laughs> I mean, they still made it look like really well. And yeah. like you could tell they had a lot more filming locations to kind of go over. And that's why everything looks so well, in which that's what we'll talk about next in the cinematography. Yeah, so just to start off, I I hate to keep referring back to this 1996 ghost scene, but it yeah. seriously, it blew me away. I yeah. was super impressed with it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Super impressed by it. Definitely the use of the forest um, in the ghost scene was very impressive. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> the death scene, as we've talked about previously, mm-hmm. um, the uh, just like the the acting out of the scene itself compared to 1990, which didn't have that. 1996, right. it showed, um, you know, the pouring of the poison into the ear. It showed, yeah. uh, you know, it's a blood coagulant, so it's it's gonna make you have like blood clots, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, Hamlet's father started like choking. You started seeing kind of what the effect of that would be and it really gave a really good visual yeah and in the 1990 version we don't get that no not at all and yeah and leading on to that kind of going towards the ending of the movie which is probably the best parts of the whole play and the movie is the fight scene and um both are really good but something about the 96 version just stand out because it's like an actual action scene yeah and so it's shot really well and it's an actual fencing match compared to uh, the 1990 version when it was actually a sword fight. And so I think that 
um this uh fight scene was shot really well and um but only one thing that i took away from this is that in the 1996 version they do not die how they how the characters like gertrude hamlet and laertes they do not die like they do in the real play whereas the 1990 version gets everything right yeah. and so uh for example like Laertes is actually actually isn't stabbed. He's actually like thrown off of a balcony. And um I think Hamlet or yeah, I think that was probably the only ones that really that they didn't get right. But um but yeah, do you want to say anything about that too? I I really don't have any input. Um cinematography on it was good, but mm-hmm. as you said, it was uh kind of a mismatch from what the script said. It was this kind of falls under the omission or addition of content. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like the omission of taking away what the actual scene is and they're adding in what they feel like. And it just kind of feels feels a little bit out of place. Yeah. And I would totally agree that, uh, you know, like the soundtrack and um, kind of like what they were using, it just made the scene just feel a lot better. It was like really uplifting and really felt like you're watching an action movie. Yeah, uh, I would I would tend to agree. 